everybody, Nigel the Ready, Nigel's Mother Bench, and I'm back today with another review. Now, you've already seen me review this kit back a few weeks ago when I first got it, and I think it's a lovely kit of a lovely subject. Um, these Japanese um, single engine aircraft are just gorgeous, aren't they? You've got the Zero up there, and this one, and then you've got the Kate, which there's a lot of talk about um, online that you know, Infinity models are no more and they're giving up and they're not going to produce the Kate. And people are saying, no, I've been guaranteed it's going to come. I have a, a, a good relationship with HP8. I consider I've got a good relationship with them. I emailed them, had no reply. I asked the question about it. I also really heard about a delivery that I was expecting. I didn't get a reply. That's coming next week now. So, um, but basically, yeah, they are very, very busy, apparently. Um, and whether this kit ever appears or not, I do not know. The other thing I'd like to talk about is the quality. Um, I was at the Avon show and I saw a guy on the mainly military model stand and he picked this kit up and I said, go for it, mate, it's gorgeous. He said, no way. He said, I've built the Vampire never again, never again when I buy one of their kits. Now, apparently the Helldiver is OK. Frankie Day's building it. He's getting on great. I've spoken to another couple of people that have built it and they thought it was OK. It's got its issues, but, you know, it's a short run kit at the end of the day. Uh, but apparently the Vampire wasn't that good. Apparently this is much better, better than both of the others. So, I don't know. Pays your money, takes your choice. But I haven't built this yet. You can see it's in the box. It's still unstarted, unsurprisingly, with the amount of bloody projects I've got ongoing. Um, you can see in there it's still unstarted, still in its, in its bags. Um, I've been waiting for all the extras. And yes, as you know, just as with the Helldiver and with the Vampire, this one's the same. You buy the basic kit and then there's a boatload of extras that go with it that come from the same company. And I was chatting to someone the other day about this, who someone who should remain nameless. And um, we were kind of saying, like, it seems a bit daft. You know, they, they make a photo etched instrument panel set. And all it is, is a photo etched instrument panel. You still use the kit decals. You still use the kit instrument panel. So why bother moulding the instrument panel? Why don't they just put the photo etch... Why make a mould for an instrument panel when you could have just put the photo etch instrument panel in, in the box? You know, it seems crazy. And there's a lot of stuff I've got here today that we can look at. And you might think to yourself, you know, do you really need it? I just got it because I wanted to have it all. Um, it's all, all this all this stuff has come from Art Scale Kit. I have paid for it. It's not free. Uh, Art Scale Kit, Peter has done me a great deal on it all. And um, yeah, so it's you, you won't see any sort of uh, paid promotion or anything going up because I've paid for this stuff. So that's the kit. It's HP. It's HPH. It's Infinity Models, which is HPH. The kit number is three two zero six. Go back a few weeks. You'll see I did a review of it. It's got some very nice plastic in it, indeed. So here is a box, and the box is so full I've had to put this one on the outside. It's an art scale kit box, as you can see, and there is all of the stuff. I've had this coming through in drips and drabs and I got the final last few bits to come today in a in a delivery from ASK so I'm happy about that. So what have we got in here? We have a resin set again from Infinity Models HPH and this is number seven and this is Aichi D3A1 Val folded wings. So there we go so you've got parts in there to make folded wings on your Val. This one here is number six and this is a 3D printed machine gun. Because, you know, I'm going to get it all out in a minute. I've taken the staples out of the packaging so that we don't waste time taking staples out. This one here is number five. You'd think I planned this, wouldn't you? This is the, um, well, these are the, the, the coloured navigation lights. So rather than clear parts you've got these to put in, you could just paint your parts clear. I got them because they exist. This one here is number three. And these are the Val exhaust set. Now, in a minute, we'll get the instructions out and we'll see if this is really necessary or not. So that's number three. Here we have number four, and this is the Val engine set. Now, I got this because it's resin and it does look very, very nicely made. So we'll see how that looks. And I know there's also some issues with the Val engine in the kit. It's, it's made the wrong way round or something. Um, this one here is number two, and these are the bombs. Now, quite why we need resin bombs, I do not know. They were there, so I got them. And finally, from Infinity, number one is the photo etched instrument panel set. And as you can see, there's no decals or anything. It's just an instrument panel, as far as I know. But we'll have a look at that in a minute, and we'll see what it's like. So that's all our parts there. 
before we get into any of that, I'm going to look at all the rest of the stuff in this box, which is all lovely. Right, here we have one-sided and double-sided masks from Artscale Kit. Artscale Kit masks, I think, are awesome. They are really, really nice. Um, and this is the double-sided, so you've got the inside and the outside. And you can see on there just how many masks there are. So if you don't buy a mask and set for something with that many windows, you must be wanting to torture yourself. But uh, there we go. So we've got the wheels as well. So that's the, that's the double sided. And then here we've got the single sided. So basically that's just the outer panels. This is the inside and the outside. Doing the inside does look amazing. Um, go back and look at my Hurricane, look at my Spitfire. You'll see those. I've done the double sided on them and it does look amazing. So there's the uh, D3A1 Val single sided mass set. So there we go. Now this, this actually was sent to me free of charge. This was sent to me as a gift from HGW. Um, so thank you very much. And this has also got a set of masks. And we've also got our HGW seat belts, which in my opinion, they're my favourite seat belts. I love them. Um, you sort of get them off, wrinkle them up, straighten them out, put them through their buckles and then stain them and stuff. And they look really, really nice. And there's the instructions in the back there. And you've got the instructions for the masks. In fact, just looking at this, it looks like dead design models. I was going to say it looks like art scale kit, but it's not. I thought they were art scale kit masks. Maybe dead design models is another name for art scale kit. I don't know, but um, there we go. So beautiful, beautiful aftermarket seat belts, and that's the that's for the pilot. Um, well, there's four of those, so I'm guessing printed on both sides as well. That's nice. Um, I can't remember now. I thought the gunner just had lap belts, but obviously they don't. They have uh, proper belts as well. So there we go. So that's that. Here we have the Art Scale Kit IHE D3 A1 Val stencils. So this is going to be all your little stencils for all going all over the aircraft. And they are absolutely amazing. And if you remember, I reviewed these before. And in one of these sets, you also get stencils. There you go. With this set here, you get stencils because um, Peter thought the colour of this striping was slightly off in the kit. So he's given you a set of stencils to match this colour. And these stencils match the colour of the Himinarus, whatever you call them, in the um, in the kit. So the kit ones he thinks are a bit too bright, that's the correct colour. So you can see the difference in the colour there. So that's how thoughtful Peter is. So that's the um, that's the ITD 3A1 Val. December 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor. Uh, so this is both aircraft by the same guy, strangely. Um, you can see got the same tail numbers and everything. And then you've got this one here, which is a separate one. And this is uh, this plane has a special painting, Pearl Harbor Raid on Shokaku. So there we go, there's that one. There's this one here. It says 148 scale there. It's a print error. It's actually 32nd. Uh, and this is the, again, this is the Val from Saryu. Um, this one doesn't say where it's coming from. It's got 35. Oh, okay. It's this. It's a. It's not aircraft parrot carrier board. And this one is a Kagi Battle of Midway, 4th of June 1942. That is the one I will do because Midway is my thing, and a Kagi is my favourite ship in the, on the planet. Um, this is over China, so these are the Chinese version or in the China War. So uh, Nanang Airfield, South China, Hankou Airfield, South China. And then this one is off of Akagi, Japan Islands, April 1941. So there we go. And then finally, we've got this one here, which is the D3A1 Val for, again, um, Pearl Harbor Raid, 7th of December 41. And this is uh, White 7 of the first production batch tests in China, early 1940. Uh, this is from Zuikaku. And this one is off of Zuikaku as well. So these two come off Zuikaku. There you go. And then this one again is the stencils so that's all your lovely Japanese stencils for your model so there you go you can fill your boots with that lot right so let's have a look at the infinity aftermarket and we can compare it we'll get the kit instructions out and I'll leave the kit box open in case you want to look at any plastic if you have any questions just pop them down below and I will try and answer them for you maybe with another video I can show you what it is you're asking Right, so first off, instrument panel. So here is a photo etched instrument panel set. The bag is opening from the top, which is very unusual. So fold that back. 
Then we can get this out. Okay, so there's that bag for that one. So we've got a small photo etch panel. By the way, all this, if you're in Europe, all of this is available from Art Scale Kit. Okay, if you're in the UK, all of this is available from Hannans. So there's your instrument panel details. That's photo etched instrument panels. It's very, very crisp and sharp, very nice. It's not pre painted or anything, obviously. But we've got panels there, we've got some little grab handles and stuff. Um, so these are our instructions, obviously. So what it's telling us to do is glue those panels onto those panels, glue that lever into there, glue those bits onto there, glue those bits onto there. Now it's not telling you to sand the instrument panel off. But we've got the plastic details on the instrument panel. It's not telling us to sand them off, but obviously you will sand them off before you fit them in the place. Um, so there's these two panels here. So these, I think, go up in the, in the fuselage. So let's have a very quick look here at the plastic wherever the instrument panel is. Okay, so there is the instrument panel there. And as you can see, it has some, all it has in there is some indentations molded into the plastic so you can put your, your um, decals in there. But if you want to add the bezels and everything, you have to buy the photo etch. So you can see there the difference in the actual instrument panel itself. If I hold it like that, you can see this one has all the bezel detail on it, whereas that one has just got indentations. So basically what you will do is put your decal on it. I would sand all the detail off first. They're not saying you to remove the detail, but you're going to have to, because it won't go on otherwise. Um, so you're going to sand all the detail off of there, and then paint it, probably paint it perhaps black, I don't know, and then put your decal on. You should have an instrument panel decal to go on, I'm guessing. Do, 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 do. Yes, we have all separate. Are they separate? No, it's one decal. So there's one decal there that's going on. That's your instrument panel. So you put them down and then you're going to put your photo etch over the top. And it's going to look like that, kind of. So you can see that's very nice indeed. So they're trying to do the air scale type thing. But, um, again, it's... <laughs> It's not something you have to have, but your cockpit's going to be a lot nicer with it. So there we go. So that's the photo etch set. Um, okay, so set number two is our bombs. So we've got, basically, we've got resin bombs. We've got a set of instructions. We've got three resin cast, not printed bombs. Okay and a simple photo etch fret which is our tails for our bombs and there's some straps and stuff by the look of it so that's those and then we've got our instructions here that is telling us how it all goes together where the parts go and everything and tell us to use the kit parts here kit part there so you'd have totally given you photo etch um um spinners wouldn't you but never mind uh, and you've got the supports there for the tails going in between the fins so there we are so let's have a look at the kit bombs, if indeed the kit has any bombs. Uh, does it have any bombs? Maybe it doesn't. Let's have a look. Yes, it has kit bombs. The kit has PE parts as well. And you've got a PE part going on the front. And they're telling you to use that PE part in this set because they're not giving you the PE part. So let's have a quick look at the bombs and see what they're like. And see if the resin ones are really necessary. So you can see there, there's the, there's the bigger of the two bombs and it's got lines on it and a seam to deal with and the, the fins are moulded in plastic rather than photo etch. But um, you can see this is a lot crisper. It's also a different shape. So, oh no it's not, sorry, the fins are separate. That, that, I was looking at this here, I was thinking that was a fin but it's not, that's just a support piece for the moulding. So um, yeah, it's um, it's got rivet detail on. It's got the, the detail there, so you can see the difference in the resin and the plastic part there. So let me get the light back over the top. I had to move it earlier for all the glare. I keep forgetting to move it back. You can see the difference there in the plastic part and the on the resin part. Okay, so okay, so that's the bomb set. 
Is it really necessary? Probably not. I got it because it's there. Um, and I'll use them obviously because I got them. Right, here we go. Part number three. This is the resin Val exhaust set. So before we have a look at these, let's have a look at the instructions and see what the engine exhausts are like. Um, so we have the engine exhaust here. You have to put these two parts together at the back to make the tail of the exhaust. And then they're going to fit on the back of the engine. So they're probably on here. No, they're not. They're probably on there. Nope, they're not. Here's the engine sprue. They're probably on here. Yeah, see, there's, there's the ends. You've got to make up those ends and then file them out and everything. There's the bombs, the simpler bombs for the, the smaller ones. Um, here's the exhaust here. So we've got these moulded parts here. And when we compare them to the cast parts, we can see there's a lot more detail. We've got more detail on the clasps there where they're going onto the back of the engine. And there's more detail here on those, those uh, they're probably slipper joints there. And you can see the actual exhaust tail itself is much nicer than having to make it all up from separate parts. So there we go, a bit of cleanup required. And I'll draw that out a bit deeper as well. But um, yeah, uh, necessary, probably not. A bit of modeling skills required to not use them. But um, overall, they're obviously going to be a lot nicer than them. But how much of them is going to be seen, I do not know. But uh, you can see you've got one, two, three, four, you've got four parts making up each exhaust. And getting it all to go on and be seamless is probably not going to be very easy. So that's them. And what they're telling you here to do is just cut them off the tree and glue them to the back of your engine. Job done. So I hope they fit perfectly. We shall see. So we'll put that back in there. Like so. Right. Number four is the engine set. Now the engine... just had the engine sprue on my hand, what have I done with it? Here it is. The engine in the kit is very nice, it's a bit, the fins are a bit softly moulded, you can see on the cylinders, but they're there. And how much can you really see of it? Probably not a lot. Um, we've got the intakes there, we've got the cylinders here. Now I have, there's somebody's done a very quick build of this kit online. I think they may have been Japanese. Um, and it looks like they're showing us that it's the wrong way round. So when you actually go to fit that yeah, it looks like that part there fits onto there. No, that's the yeah, that's the back of the cylinders there because it's got the inlet and the exhaust, and that's the back of those cylinders there. So that's facing this way. That's facing this way. That's the front, and that's the front. So yeah, it is. It is all wrong. So that's going to be something to play with and work out. So you can obviously get the engine set if you don't want to mess around with that. It's not much work to do, not at all. But we have in here a bag of resin parts. And they are typical HPH. They're cast on this slither of resin, puddle, puddle molding. And all you do is get that on a nice flat sheet just rub away the back make sure you tape it down don't get a piece of emery and just chuck it on a piece of wet and dry don't just get it like this don't just chuck it down on the bench and start rubbing because as you can see the edges lift up and what you'll do you'll end up putting a bevel on the back of your part so what you're going to do is get something like this get a piece of glass my um i'll tell you a story my microwave recently blew up so i took it all apart and got the glass out of the door so it's a nice sort of a3 sheet size a3 size sheet of glass and what i could do is get some masking tape and tape a square of paper to it and there's my perfectly flat sandy metal in. so um that'll be really handy for resin like this and something else that's on the way so um we can see on there the casting is absolutely gorgeous the fins are a lot sharper um and very very nicely done indeed obviously you've got the halves to glue together but you have on the the plastic parts as well so um We've got our ignition ring there going around. We've got the spinner there. We've got is that intake tubes, I'm guessing. And we've got the gearbox part for the front there. 
that's beautifully made. Not sure how that compares to the plastic part. The plastic part's nice. See the plastic part there? Very nice. Probably not a lot of difference actually. You know, this one is sharper, the bolt, the bolt heads and that are better on this one. But, um, so I'm just thinking that there. It looks like these here are the actual inlets, inlet tubes. So we've probably got to do some surgery on here. We'll have a look at the instructions now. So that's the engine set. Let's have a look at the instructions. So basically we've got these parts here. So we should have four of those and we have. We've got one, two, three, four. We've got those two there and we've got that one there. So we've got everything there. So it's telling us to doesn't tell you how to you need to get the parts all cleaned up get them glued together and then all of it is going to go in with that great big plug in the center so this is all going to go together correctly and then so you've got this ring here that's your inlet ring so you're basically going to end up with a spare plastic engine for a display if you want to and then you've got to take that lump off the back of there there's a lump on the back of that inlet ring that's got to come off so probably best to take that off beforehand. Or is that part of that? No, it can't be that. Not sure quite what's going on there, but they're telling you to take that lump off. Um, and then you're going to put some 0.6 millimeter uh, rod in for your push rods here. So that's your push rods rings. Oh, I see. Sorry. It's the back of this piece here. There's a lump on the back of that piece there. So that's going to be extremely difficult to remove because when you look at it like this, you can see if you just rub it on a flat surface, it's going to rub away your push rods. So it's going to take some very careful cutting and sanding and trimming to get that off. So we'll have a look at that when we build it. Um, and then we're going to add some 0.6 rod, or brass rod or whatever. It doesn't tell us the length, but we can always work that out. And that's going to be our push rods. And then we've got our regulator there there's a spinner going in the front the spindle going in the front and then these are going to be our intake tubes so yeah all in all very nice it's going to build up into a beautiful engine i should imagine but um and it's going to be a lot nicer than the plastic one so there we go we'll get this uh, put away right moving along um number five is the wingtip lights and these are just basically colored cast resin as you can see to replace the clear parts which you can see there and there so really they need no explanation I mean you you could just paint your clear parts but I may as well have the full set of nine right number six is this absolutely amazing machine gun now if you saw my review recently of the um of the air scale gun for the Devastator. By the way, the Devastator is in now, it's on the way to me. Um, that thing was absolute work of art, and I think this is equally so. I mean, I can't even see, the gun is in there somewhere. We've got to cut it out somehow. But there is a machine gun in there. So that is very, very nice indeed. I'm not sure what the kit machine gun looks like. There it is there. Um, so yeah perfectly ample but if you really want to go for something lovely then it's such a feature of the aircraft you know you can see it there sticking up at the back it's such a nice feature that it needs to be there really so um there we go I forgot to mention that the um, yes yeah, telling you here to trim it out I forgot to mention that the um, The Val was actually the dive bomber. So if you look at the Kagi's complement of aircraft, the Val was a dive bomber. The Val is the name we gave it. Oh, come on. Um, and then you had the Zero, again, the name we gave it for the fighters. And then you had Kate, which was a torpedo bomber. So um, like the, the, uh, the Zero was their wildcat. The... Um, the Val was their SBD Dauntless or Helldiver um, and the um, the Kate was their Devastator or later Avenger so there we go 
So finally, set number seven, if you're still awake, well done. Set number seven, this is a wing fold set. Now there is no option to fold the wings in the kit because the wings in the kit are made, as you can see, as one length. So unless you actually cut them and do some surgery, you can't have folding wings. So this is gonna be the most fun set to use. We've got some nice pictures of it here built up, that's good. Lovely color instructions, really, really nice. So um, here we have the set. So let's have a good look at this one because I think this is well worth having, even if you just fold one tip up because these, these Japanese folded wings, they look so funny with just, just the tiny little tip at the end folded up. So what we've got here are basically mouldings of the plastic parts which have been cut off of the wing. Okay, so what we're going to do is cut the wing to fit this in and then we've got all the interior detail of the actual wing fold there in resin. So I don't know how strong it's going to be. Um, I don't know if we're going to be using kit parts. We'll have a look at the instructions in a minute. We've got a lot of very fine, tiny little parts there, ribbing and, and stuff that's going to go in. So let's have a look at the instructions. So we've got, um, what have we got here? This is telling us what the set should include. So we've got two wings there. We've got those resin parts there, those resin parts there, and two of those there, all puddle molded. So that's all good. And then it's telling us here to cut the wings. So I have wings here. And we can see on here, if I get one of these wings out, let me have it. Okay. You can see on here, we have these panel lines to cut to on there, the same on here. So you basically cut this side of the line and then sand and trim back to it. And this, let's keep check fitting your, your wing onto it. That's the wrong one, that's the right one. Just keep checking it and get a nice fit. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's not going on like that, it's going on like that, isn't it? 90 degrees to it. So there we go. Um, and then what we've got to do is come along and shave the inside out and thin it down to half a mil thick. And I've got some ideas for that when I come to do it. I'll, I'll share it with you. But, um, if I ever get around to it, there's so much you need to get on with. So uh, there we go. So that's that. Um, and then we're going to step two. Okay, we're going to fit these. We're going to fit this part here. Six on the other side is five. So that's going to be these ribs here I'm pointing at now. And then we've got these little ribs on the bottom and what we're doing is basically building up an inner wing structure so that when we look inside when the wings up you're going to see the inner structure so that is absolutely stunning that's really really nice and then you're going to close the wing up and that's what you're going to see inside then we are going to cut the ailerons okay so you're going to cut the aileron in a panel line are the ailerons on here yes they are is that either ones or flaps? Yeah, there's the panel line there. So we're going to cut them on the panel line. And we're going to do the same with them. We're going to have them with resin parts going in. We've got resin parts there. We've got our cut off either on there with resin parts inside it. And then we're moving on to here. And you can see all this beautiful detail inside the wing there. It's going to look very impressive. And then there's the actuators there. And then you've got the, these are going to be the hinges. Got the hinges there on the top. So that's those, those bits that are raised from the surface there that I'm pointing at now. That's going to be your hinges. And then you're going to glue the wing onto that. So I don't quite know. Ah, okay. It's on here. So that is going to go into there somehow. It's the wrong way around, you idiot. That is going to go into there. And then when it closes up, that's how it would go. So you're going to put a metal rod in there, as they're showing, to act as the, the support. Okay, so there we go. Um, very interesting indeed. Not sure if they've got a metal rod going all the way across. We'll have a look at that when we come to do it. But uh, there's got to be other ways to make that stronger. Um, we shall see. Certainly, if you're the sort of person who takes your kits to a lot of shows and moves around a lot, maybe maybe leave give this one a miss because that's probably going to be quite because they're 
just quite a little lump of resin there and um, hanging on those two little tiny supports it's not going to be the strongest thing in the world so uh, we'll look at that when we come to build it anyway if we ever get around to building it so that has been that so that is all the extras for that lovely Infinity Aichi Valve kit. So I don't think there's anything else you can get for it. I've got a whole lot. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, please come back for more. There's going to be lots more videos. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the box down there, subscribe, and uh, hit the notification bell, and you'll get notified whenever I put a new video. I try to put something out pretty much every day. So um, and there's a good beginner series going on that everybody's enjoying. Currently building the 148th um, Airfix Sea King, the brand new one. Um, I've got to get back to the Border Models Lancaster I've been working on for over a year and and also we're doing the Berlin Chieftain tank which I've just had the tracks come through for which is lovely so we can get that one finished we've got the Scammell tank transporter which is lovely I've just done another video on that one so that's coming together lots and lots of work going on and lots and lots of stuff coming your way if you're into your aircraft I've got the Hong Kong models A20G coming on very very soon which I keep saying so I want to get some other stuff finished first I'll see you all soon thank you for watching Bye for now.